being here on this beautiful day and thank you to those who are joining us online as well so uh, so just first uh, an announcement we are going to be taking it week by week in terms of where we're going to worship whether we'll be outside or inside uh, and we're of course doing that based as best we can on on the information about the pandemic we will go ahead and stay outside for next week so let me just go ahead and say that now for next Sunday again we'll be outside you know we're counting on good weather we hope for good weather um, and then we'll We'll see you after that. So in other uh, announcements, uh, quick stuff, we are continuing our food drive for the parish cupboard. We'll do that, you know, really every week, always. Uh, through the end of November, we're also doing um, a drive for undies, that's to say t-shirts, underwear, and socks for the Springfield Rescue Mission. That'll just go through November. And uh, we're doing actually the United Thank Offering drive right now as well. So that just goes through next week. Next Sunday, we'll dedicate our United Thank Offerings and then we'll mail it off to the diocese who will mail off the collected offerings of the diocese to the i'm not actually 100 percent sure where but to the national church and uh and from there they'll be dispersed as money as grant money to help people in need so we'll do that next week so if you want to contribute to the united thank offering and you haven't brought it back already then next week is the week one other thing next week after our service and assuming the weather is cooperative we will have a another one of our creation walks that so we'll go over in robinson state park We'll gather here and then caravan over there. And uh, so that'll be immediately after the service. See, just a couple of other things. Uh, the dovetail is out. I did email that out to everybody this week. So if you received emails from me, you should have already gotten it. We do have a few hard copies here for folks who would like that. And, um, and if you didn't receive the email and are not here, then you can um, let me know and we'll see if we can't get one to you. Again, thanks to Joe Juber for putting that together. Uh, we also have, and, uh, and Bob and Jim have got over there, and we'll keep those out for a little while longer, the four day by day that we're now into November. It's the new, new issue of that. So those devotionals are available over there or if, whenever we're inside in the narthex. Um, we're continuing our stewardship campaign. That'll go through the end of November. And I think that's it for me. So, uh, so our first hymn for this morning is 
from the St. David Songbook number 33, Here I Am to Worship. And again, thank you for being with us. Our service this morning continues on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we continue with the Gloria on page 356. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil, and make us children of God, and heirs of eternal life. Grant that, having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, 
where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We continue now with the readings. First reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 to 18. We do not want you to be uniformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven and the dead, and Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today, Psalm 78, we'll read responsively, we'll read together. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times, that which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us. We will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know, and the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children, so that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. Sequence and Praise Him is number 107 from the St. David Songbook. Lord, I lift your name on high. <laughs>
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flask of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a show. Look, here's the bridegroom. Come out and meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give me some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. So as we headed into uh, election night this week, I thought back to 2000. So in 2000, I was caught up in the whole drama of the thing, and it was close, as you will no doubt remember. And so I decided I was going to stay up until finally the election was resolved. Now again, if you remember this election, you will know that I did not make it. In fact, it ended up taking a month for that election to be resolved. So this year I thought, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to get caught up in it. I know it's not going to be declared on Tuesday night. I'm just going to go to bed. And so I went on to bed at my usual time, and that was great. But uh, I had a restless night because I was caught up in it. We did get up, both Carrie and I got up in the middle of the night. We checked the results. That was inconclusive. Over the next several days, I checked the results over and over again. I was especially engaged because my own home state, Georgia, was one of the ones that was always in the news. And I say all that just to say that this week I, and I suspect many of you, had the experience of waiting with the kind of eagerness for something to happen and having that take longer than we might have wanted or longer than we might have expected. And that is, I think, some connection to our parable for this morning, which is a parable about waiting. So it begins this way. Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like this. It's like a great party. It's going to be a wedding banquet. And everybody's invited. So far, so good. But then the bridegroom is delayed. Now, we're not explained why the bridegroom is delayed. That's a little tricky because, of course, if you don't know why the delay is happening, you also don't know how long it's happening. That's kind of the bad news. But there is good news. The good news is the bridegroom is reliable and the bridegroom is good. And so at some point, this wedding party is going to happen. You don't really have to worry about that. And you don't know exactly why it is that the delay is going on, but you know there must be some kind of good reason for it. And so, so you wait. Now this next little bit has always troubled me about our parable. So the, the wise bridesmaids have plenty of oil. They're good to go. But the foolish bridesmaids have not brought any extra oil. So when the bridegroom does finally show up, they're not ready. And they go to the wise bridesmaids, they say, we're going to need a little bit of your oil. This is the part that's always kind of bothered me, I think. And the wise bridesmaids say, nah, we're not going to do that. Well, this is all a parable of the kingdom of God. The wise bridesmaids stand for the saints who are all set to enter the kingdom of God. And I think to myself, I think they might be a little more generous in that moment. But that's, that is, I've come increasingly to realize that is to miss the point of this parable. The parable is not about the foolish bridesmaids in the end. It's about the wise bridesmaids. 
We're being told we need to be like the wise bridesmaids. So we get asked the question, what lesson do we get from them? And I think it's two, two points. So on the one hand, the wise bridesmaids continue to look forward with eager expectation for the time when this king, when this the heavenly kingdom, the, the wedding banquet will happen. So they've got this eager expectation, and they are realistic enough to know that it might take a while. So they settle in for the long haul, and they wait patiently. Now that combination, it seems to me, of eager expectation and patience is the lesson of our parable. Of course, that combination is hard. It's hard to combine both. It's not hard to be either expectant or patient. What's hard is the two. So I was thinking about this at a handful of levels. Begin just personally. My, uh, my elder son turned 24 on Friday. We went on yesterday to go see him. And we were, you know, wishing him happy birthday. And as a part of that, I said what I seem always to say to him these days, which is, so you about ready to start cranking out some grandbabies? Carrie suggested to me that this is maybe something that I should drop. <laughs> Benjamin is not ready to be a parent. He says that. This is not my assessment and not a criticism. He's not ready to be a parent. He doesn't want to be a parent. So on this one, I've got plenty of expectation. What I'm working on is the patience. And at least according to my family, I'm not doing very good with the whole patience part of that balance. That's just a personal example. Because you can think about it for us as a parish. So I'm ready to be worshiping in there with you. And not just to be inside, which I had, of course, originally thought we would be today, but to be inside and to be singing and to be hugging and have coffee hour. To be inside with no real concerns about safety. To be able to worship like we want to worship with each other, like we want to be with each other. And I continue to hold on to the idea that this day will come. And I continue to pray that this will come sooner rather than later. This is another one where I'm pretty good on the whole expectation part. And what I'm working on is the patience part. So I'm trying to be patient. And I'm trying to be aware of the fact that God is with us in this moment, even though this is not exactly how I would envision this moment being, and that God is at work. And it's my job while I wait to do what I want to do as a parish. It's my job to be faithful to God in this time and in this stage, to be prudent and to be wise and to be safe and to be faithful. So I say I got the expectation part, struggle a little bit more with, the patient part, but that's our task. You can think about it as a nation. It appears the election is wrapping up at any rate, but I don't just long to know who our next our leaders are going to be in the next few years. What I long for as a nation is the time when we can become a little bit less dysfunctional, a little bit less polarized, when people who are quite liberal and people who are quite conservative and people who are everywhere in the middle can work together with integrity for the common good. So I'm waiting for that day. And I don't know when that day is going to come. And for me on this one, the hard part really is to hold on to the expectation. It's easy just to sit down and say, well, it's just not going to happen. I've washed my hands of the whole affair. I'm giving up. But this is one of those places where it's not just to be patient and to wait, but we're also called to hold on to that hope that this is possible and to do what we can to advance it. But then for us as Christian people, what matters the most is the kingdom of God, which is what is, after all, the subject of the parable. And here, too, we can struggle. So we look around at our world, and we don't see a lot of kingdom, and we do see a lot of problems. And it's easy to begin to forget that God is at work, and that God is with us, and that someday, as we say every week in the creed, God's kingdom will come. And we wait. But sometimes, at least, we struggle, and our faith wavers a little bit, and that expectation begins to wane. And in those moments, we can think again about the wise bridesmaids who are eager for the arrival of the bridegroom and who know that the bridegroom is going to show up. And so they continue to hold on to that expectation even as they wait for this sort of indefinite amount of time. 
As they wait, of course, we do have to be patient and faithful as we wait for the coming of our Lord and the establishment of God's kingdom and that time of justice and peace, which we look forward to. But as we wait, we, be, we are called to be patient and to be faithful, to look for where God is now, to get on board with God's mission and to do what we can to show our love of neighbor even as we wait for our beloved God. And so my prayer for us on this day is that we can be like these wise bridesmaids in really every aspect of our life, but particularly in our Christian lives, and that we can hold both to that expectation and to that faithful patience. And I say that in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Our service this morning continues with the Nicene Creed on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. So please join me in affirming our common faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue now with the prayers of the people. say God our creator please respond with guide us in truth and love loving God creator of this world who is the source of our wisdom and understanding watch over this nation help us to come together as one people under you God our creator guide, guide us, us in truth and love help us create communities that will build your kingdom here on earth Communities that will protect the poor, stand up for the vulnerable, advocate for those who are not seen and heard, and listen to everyone's voice. God, our creator, guide us in truth and love. We pray for this nation that is deeply divided. May we come together for the common good and do as you have called us to do, to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you through creation. God, our creator, guide us in truth and love. Help us act out of love, mercy, and justice, rather than out of arrogance or fear. God, our creator, guide us in truth and love. Lord, continue to guide us as we work for the welfare of this world. We pray for places that are torn by violence, that they may know peace. God, our creator, Guide us in truth and love. We pray for communities who are struggling with inequality, unrest, and fear. May we all work toward reconciliation with one another and with God. God, our creator, guide, guide us in truth and love. Help us to listen in love, work together in peace, and collaborate with one another as we seek the betterment of our community and world. God, our creator, guide us in truth and love. 
<coughs> we pray for the sick, the suffering, and all the people in need of our prayers, especially Lisa and Lynn, Kristen, Jill, Nikki, Du Gray and Downs families and Lefebvre's as they grieve, Janice Mackey, Bob's mother, Mary Dutton, continued healing, Jennifer, healing and strength, Chris and family, peace and encouragement, Marilyn, healing from COVID, Allison, healing from dental procedure, all veterans, thanks for their lives and their service. God, our creator. Guide, Guide us in truth, truth and love. love. Turning back in our prayer book to page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another <laughs> again. Okay, good. All right. So we'll continue in just a moment with Eucharistic Prayer A, which begins on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. Come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. I should have mentioned this at the morning. We are doing some things to shorten the service a little bit, so you may notice we had uh, one fewer reading, and um, and also I'm trying to get my sermon a little bit shorter with, with what success you can judge. 
So we now continue with uh, Eucharistic Prayer A, beginning on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given to, for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ, Christ will come again. again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us seek the feast. Alleluia. And these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. repeat the spiritual communion prayer after me in union O Lord, in union, o Lord with, your people, with your faithful people at every altar of your church at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today, since I cannot receive you today. In the sacrament of your body and blood. In the sacrament of your body and blood. I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. And let me never be separated from you. And, and let, let me never be separated from you. May I live in you. May I live in you. And you in me. And you in me. In this life and in the life to come. In this, in this life, life and in the life, life to, come. to come. Amen. 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 And now let us pray together the post-communion prayer on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Our going forth hymn is number 111 in the St. David's Songbook, and that will be followed by a song from our hymnal in honor of the veterans. into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you, Terry, as always. Thank you. Michelle, thank you. You're welcome. I'll leave this over. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, yep. Great. Thank you. Yeah. 